Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Safe Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host David and joining me today we have Amy. Hey all. We have Stuart. Hey everyone. And we have Tim Rose, the one and only Admiral Akbar. Hello. It's a trap. Okay, <laughs> great. We'll get that out of the <laughs> story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole point of this podcast was to avoid It's a Trap. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I expected Stuart to break it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask about the line, but... <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, we might as well just sort of get this rolling. The rumours have been floating around that you might be in episode 7. Are uh, you allowed to comment on anything about that? As of two days ago, I am allowed to say that yes, I will be appearing in episode 7. Nice. Very nice. So, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, Stuart, have you got any questions you want to... Yeah, uh, first off, um, how did you get into this, um, into uh, puppeteering and voice acting? Um, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I started a, a small little community college near my home uh, to be a graphics arts major. And while I was doing the graphic arts, I literally stumbled into the theater. A friend of mine was trying out for a play, and I followed in behind him and auditioned as well, and I got the part, and he didn't, so he got upset with me. (laughs) And I enjoyed the acting, but I never enjoyed standing up for the applause at the end of it that much. Hmm. And they started doing Renaissance fairs at this university, and I researched Renaissance fairs, and Punch and Judy kept coming up, so I just, ha oh, I'll do a puppet show. And next thing I knew, I fell madly in love with designing, sculpting, building, and mm-hmm. acting puppets, and I've been doing that for the next 35 years after that, so. Yeah. And they, they do look, the ones that I've seen definitely look spectacular. They look really, really good, so. That oh. really good work, so. Thank you. Yeah, um, anything? Yeah, more. Um, I'm going to briefly touch on, on, on your time in Star Wars as Admiral Akbar. When um, when uh, George came to to you to, for the role, uh, what was it like uh, going the, doing the creative process behind uh, the creation of Admiral Akbar? I was quite heavily involved with the creative process of Admiral Akbar. <laughs> the, I was working in Phil Tippett's workshop, and at the time, the way of doing these things was to have a full body suit but because we didn't really have any radio control or anything to speak of in those days it had to be quite limited because it would be cable control Mm. and then they would do a a close-up figure that was mounted on a tabletop and he would be for strip shots where everything in the face moved and I had only just recently been fired off of a movie called Greystoke that Rick Baker was doing Mm. because I tried to talk them into making their close-up puppet, take him off the table and make him a puppet, and they said no. And when I showed Phil the same thing, he said, sure, run with it. So a lot of people don't realize that all of Akbar's close-ups were actually done with a Muppet-style hand puppet. Oh, nice. Which they only just recently, Lucasfilm pulled everything out of the archives, and in this new Bible that they've released, they've, they've got the puppet and the full body suit side by side. First time in the years I've told the story that I can say, and there he is right there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's nice. really cool. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be cool. Um, one of the questions we raised on the Facebook page was, what's it like being inside or behind the puppet while it's acting? Can, do you have like a feed that you can see where you can sort of see what it's doing, or you've just got to try and guess how the, how the puppet is reacting? Um, yeah, you have to do that through rehearsal. It, it's a matter, they're very funny things because when you're in one of these suits, you can be acting your cotton socks off and it can be doing nothing at all. <laughs> so it is a matter of finding out what you need to do for 
what you're trying to emote, what you're trying to yeah. show to your audience, how it gets to the outside of the costume. And I, I was um, very recently doing some of this work and it suddenly struck me after uh, 59 years that what we do when we're in a full body suit costume could only be described as extremely masochistic and ironically a lot of the same things that you have to endure and experience when you're in the costume is the same sort of thing that they use in Guantanamo Bay to interrogate suspects. The sensory deprivation, you can't see much of anything when you're in there, uh, lack of oxygen <laughs> due to that, one tiny little that, hole that's that, letting that, any fresh air that, in. That weird <laughs> smell which is constantly getting worse and you're not quite sure where it's coming from. <laughs> it just sounds like a weak old stormtrooper outfit. <laughs> Yeah, I was in a hotel room and it, I couldn't get rid of the smell of foam latex out of my nostrils because I had this head on all day long and it just wouldn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, going back and working on, on um, episode 7, what was it like uh, reuniting with... Working the, in... Episode 7, Star Wars episode, episode 7. seven yes. What was it like uh, reuniting with the old cast and then working with the new cast? I'm afraid I can't really talk about any of that. <laughs> that that's, 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 fine. that's perfectly fine. We, we definitely understand. <laughs> yeah. um, the next question that was raised on the Facebook page was, if you could be any other character in that movie, any of the Star Wars movies, which character would you be? What, that I would like to be? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, from the very first film, I wanted to be Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much understandable. <laughs> yeah. Everyone no, that, that, as acting the character, I, I would want to be the real yeah. <laughs> fantasy character of yeah. Amazon, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your other works, Star Crystal and everything, how did you uh, get onto those projects? Um, I was doing theatre lighting in New York City. And I heard through a friend that uh, the Muppets were hiring, looking for people in their workshop. And I went over and auditioned and got the part there. I actually, I did try to get a job with the Muppets two years earlier, before I lived in New York City. And I did a thing called a, a bag puppet booth. And it's a hand puppet booth that fits on your shoulders and you can walk around with it. And I was very shy as a young man. So I traveled down from upstate New York on the train. And in the middle of the street, I got dressed up in my bag puppet booth and walked into Henson's and handed over, well, I had my dragon <laughs> hand over <laughs> my CV. And you could tell the lady behind the desk, and I'm alive when you're <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, when I did go back to get a job, they didn't remember I was the same guy who <laughs> <laughs> showed up in hand puppet booth. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's on the picture now this lady's like oh, there's a puppet box giving me a thing do I, I don't accept think I it or do I call <laughs> security. security I don't think they had CCTV in those days so I got away with that one it's not on the internet anymore yeah I was going to say which you're grateful for now <laughs> so, so um, unrelated to Star Wars or any of that um, if I don't know what you know about sort of comic book movies and stuff like that, but if Marvel came up to you and said, we're looking at putting you in a movie, you get to be anyone you want to be, Marvel or DC, any superhero movie, which character would you like to do that? And that's the last question I got from the Facebook page. <laughs> well, there um, is it, is it, it's a trap. <laughs> well, like I'd like to uh, reprise my role as Howard the Duck. Yeah. It's the film that I'm the most proud of in spite of the fact that it was an extremely flawed piece. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I'm so proud of that one because you have to remember at the time the animatronics characters tended to be a cute thing that sat on the shelf or whatever and Howard was the leading man in the movie. Yeah. And I think we managed to keep him alive quite well. Nice. And I would like to I'd like to do him again as an animatronic, not as a CG, yeah. <laughs> which he will be when they redo yeah. him. Yeah. But to do the original character. I I was most upset by the fact that they sent me the comic books, I fell in love with the comic books, mm -hmm. and then I got there and I went, This isn't Howard, this is what Howard looks like here and they would not let me rebuild him yeah. to, to match match the cartoon character, so that was my big regret that I wasn't able to 
Yeah, it's understandable. Influence that bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. I got one. Um, from a fan, uh, if a fan wanted to get into uh, puppeteering and stuff, what's a good way um, for them to get started? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I not myself per se. <laughs> What fantasies are we having? <laughs> do you, do you, do you well, no, I would say podcasts and things. <laughs> I, I think these days using the internet, yeah, because um, you know you have to you have to make something that somebody will want to see and they find amusing and then hope it goes viral and yeah. then the opportunities will be offered out of that. I would say it's yeah. the best way these days. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to keep running. Okay. Yep. Um, as I said, uh, we did mention um, Howard the Duck. If uh, Marvel asked you to reprise your role as the voice of Howard, would you do it for the reboot? <laughs> um, it wasn't actually my voice for Howard. Oh. Do you have time to hear the story? Yeah. Go yeah. for it. Um, if, when, we, when we're running out of time, just sort of let us know. Just sort of wave or something, and we'll wrap it up. There's a last minute. So. <laughs> No, I've got all day. I I'm, I'm in no rush. <laughs> anyway, I was told when I was hired on that I was doing the guide track for Howard and Robin Williams was going to be the voice of the duck. So because I was only doing guide track and I got to go to the dailies every day, I would experiment while I was performing him to see if I had been asked to do Howard, what voice would I use for him? And I tried this voice and that voice, and finally I came up with one, and oh, I really liked that one, and I just sort of stuck with that one for the rest of the filming. But then Mr. Williams decided that he wasn't going to do the movie, and they did a rough edit of it, at which point I got called in mm. to the producer's office, and it's like, kids listen to this, don't they? I'll keep it all clean. <laughs> Tim, what the heck have you been up to? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? They said, well, your voice for the duck, it's all over the place. And they said, well, I was just doing a guide track, so I was playing around with it, you know. And they, they had decided that they also liked my voice, but they liked the one that I had settled on. So I then, after being there, working 14 hour days for nine months, got taken into a room to do ADR, which was its own area of expertise, mm. I having never done it before. And the double whammy was that I had to listen to my own voice in the headphones <laughs> while I was trying to do the voice that they liked while watching the movie <laughs> over again. And I was very tired and <laughs> I was very new at it. And they gave me 10 minutes to get it right and then just said, this won't work, we've got to get somebody else to do it. So unfortunately, it wasn't my voice on the movie, but he did copy the voice that they liked yeah. that I had done. So. Would it be possible to get a quick little sample of that voice, if that's okay? If I know okay, you won't well, believe it. I, I <laughs> can't. You can? Ah, that's, I can't. that's well, fine. <laughs> okay, there, there's a freaky thing. Why, I know, it, it's, it's forever ago, well, I don't understand. No, what, what, <laughs> happen, what happens with these characters is you, you start off mechanically doing it, and then when you do it long enough, they take over some little section of your yeah. brain. And they get so deeply ingrained that unless you have the mechanical stuff, the whole there. thing there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole process, you have a very hard time actually. Yeah. That's, it's, that's understandable. Going back and uh, yeah. doing the performance. Um, another uh, question uh, with um, um, Admiral Apo is his voice. Hmm. How did you come across the voice? Was it were you, when you were doing Akbar? Oh, well, he, he isn't my voice either. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, I'm fine. how many times I told you to do your research? <laughs> You're out the hill. Just, just go. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously did the performance and said all the lines, but the, the man you hear is Eric Bowersfeld, ah. who I finally got to meet in Anaheim after 30 years. <laughs> And he is now 93 years old, still a total and complete character, fascinating man. He also, um, he, he was telling me how, how he overvoiced Harrison Ford, but don't tell Harrison, I'm not supposed to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when they would get messy sound bits, he, he is so good at doing imitations yeah. of other people that rather than paying loads of money and get them in, if it was just like three or four words, 
Eric would do it for him <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's a master of the human voice. Yeah, yeah. Right. I got a, um, and I love you, man. <laughs> I got another one. If, um, I spent my whole life being overvoiced, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I, live, I live in England. I, I was just doing a thing. It was called Wizards vs. Aliens. I've heard of this. And it was a small British... Well, British and cold American. Yeah production that we were doing down in Cardiff right next to Doctor Who yeah. and I was doing the Necris King and I built him and I was performing him and this was great because I was doing what I love doing and that's bringing it from the design all the way through to the performance and I thought they can't over voice me because they don't have the money <laughs> so this was it I was going to do the voice and um, nope. I made the mistake of mentioning one day about this character. I said, well, the only person who could really do this voice really would be Brian Blessed because he's just so over the top and like that all the time, you know. <laughs> well, they decided that it was working so well and I had done such a fantastic job. They were going to find some more money in the budget and they brought in Brian Blessed. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen it. Just once in my career. Just once. <laughs> I think I've seen a few episodes of that. Hmm? I think I've seen a few episodes of which um, was his first aliens. Yeah. yeah, my daughter is um, in that is uh, Gwen Christie, oh. who is uh, Game of Thrones. She's the big. She's, she's a very Fesman. very tall yeah. woman in Game of Thrones. Yeah, Ca yeah, Captain Phasma. Yeah, yes. yeah. And she also has a fantastic. Um, costume for episode 7 I love that they were shown in Vanity Fair so I'm yeah, I love releasing any secret information yeah, no, I, I love that nice. that custom Stormtrooper outfit I saw it I was like oh my goodness oh the second I saw that I just said I was just like, Stormtroopers move over I know who everybody's dressing as in next, yep. <laughs> <laughs> next convention that is got to be that the most beautiful be costume yeah, I've ever seen it's gorgeous funny yeah. I've got uh, another question with uh, no, no. Um, okay. Anyway, that's about all the time we've got left, so I'm cutting Stuart off and throwing him out the airlock. I think Stuart. They throw each other out the airlock. They'll teach you not to do it on the 17th floor. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, anyway, that's all the time we've got for, so we'll um, get back to you guys in the next podcast. So, that's David. Bye, all. Bye, everyone. And this is Tim Rose at No Back Star, so maybe 14. Have fun and we'll catch you next time.